Oh my God, the belt blew. This line exploded. Boat life can be hard sometimes, and the quote, everything breaks, starts to make sense as soon as you step foot on a vessel. And any little problem that seems easy to fix will probably take half your day, making you feel that you're on edge. But that's just part of the adventure, and the reward is too big to ever get disappointed. Because sailing is a magical experience. When you hoist the sails for the first time and feel the wind power pushing you towards your destination, you feel free. I believe that sailing is responsible for shaping the person I am on and off the water, and I wouldn't change that for anything. And what do you think about being in paradise? I love it. <laughs> God, the belt blew. Okay, we lost the belt. Looks like it's getting chewed up by something. Looks like it just jumped off for some reason. Oh, that's why. It broke the bolt holding it in. What happened? The alternator bolt here. That bolt is broken. So it, that's the one that I that I put in there to uh, keep the new alternator in there, and it broke. The alternators fell down sideways. Boom, and then the the belt snapped off. It still had water in it. The good part is it still had water in it. If it, if it didn't have water in it, it would be toast, but um, let's see what happened. Okay, so all the tripulantes, the crew, that's Spanish for crew, are gonna go into the island and, and scale to the top of that. You see the big tower back there? That's actually not the place they're going. It, right next to it is a lighthouse and it's a really cool view. The sun's about to set and I'm restringing my guitars with the strings that Lena brought us. Thank you very much. These are awesome strings. They're the best ever! And uh, I'm waiting for the engine to cool down so I can replace that bolt and belt and water and get it running again. So um, I hope I didn't do any real bad damage to it, but what happened was the bolt broke, the alternator switched positions, and then the belt snapped off. And then uh, luckily it just happened on the way in here. So we literally went like a quarter of a mile from that island on the other side around here to the thing. So it was probably going for like 15 minutes without a belt. And uh, yeah, well, at least I got new guitar strings. Thanks for that. And let's go. Let's go get into the island. You've got what, 40 minutes before? 40 it? minutes, yeah. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. This is what happened. This bolt here that holds this together broke because I used the wrong bolt. I used one that was too thin. You can see how it was digging into this thing as it broke, and then it was it was hanging on a little bit, and it started digging in, and, it, and then it just bent over. So when it, when it broke, the um, alternator was now at an angle, like that wasn't straight up and down, now it was at an angle, and it started chewing up the belt, and that's all the belt here. <laughs> I've got a new bolt. This is all belts on this thing. The engine runs, so it didn't overheat to the point where it scalded the sides or, or, or bent the valves or anything, so we're good. Still runs perfect, starts perfectly, but um, I'm gonna need to replace the bolt with a stronger bolt, and I've got one, but um, it's a little bigger than this. It's not the original one that, that came in there, so I'm gonna have to drill this out. And the problem is I need to take this bracket off to drill it out because the drill, doesn't perfectly match it's at an angle so if I if I do it at an angle it's gonna f everything up I'm gonna have to take this bracket off here here and here take it off put it in the cockpit mount it drill through it and then when I can get the bolt through I'll put it back on put the um, alternator back on put a new belt on it and then I can we're good put some more water in it and then take it for a test run and then motor to uh, sound blast. I have no reason to believe it doesn't, it's not going to work because we just motored for like, I don't know, eight hours to get here. So it's not a big deal. I, I think it'll be fine. 
I think it was just stress for fracture from the motor here. Maybe I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay, this is what I've got. Um, I found a rigging bolt on the boat, and this is the right size that I need. The, the nut has been welded on, so I don't have to worry about that. I'll put it in from the back. The only problem is, if you look here, this hole is huge, and this hole is the right size. So the problem is, it, the, um, no matter how hard I put this on there, the machine working, it'll, it'll make it cockeyed and it'll chew through the belts it needs to be completely straight so I found this wash this little thing and that'll make it straight and that should last a while until I can get another bracket made and get the right bolt but I'm out in like the middle of nowhere so I'm putting one washer here and then I'm putting this because this fits right into this I mean it's like perfect and then I'm putting this through. When it's in there, it's perfect. Actually, this side's better than this side. This side has a little motion, but that's okay. That's not a big deal. Once that gets tightened down, it won't be moving anymore. But what I do need is some washers on this thing to keep it, to, to um, have the space in between to keep the, the alternator from moving backwards. So all these washers are gonna go on it first. Then the alternator goes on. Which is a pain. This is a real big pain in the ass here. Okay. Oh man, I need more washers. See how much space I have? Okay, okay here's the final countdown. This is what I did. Um, I changed the position of the pulley, just one washer out to make a little more space for this because it's really close to that. And then I cut that off with a Dremel tool and, and shaved it down. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you can get a good picture of how close that is, but it is stupid close. Um, everything's tight now. The bracket's all tight. This is tight. That's tight. Everything's good to go. So as long as it doesn't wobble into it or make any shavings or anything, we're going to be okay. We've refilled the water. It was almost out. So we came really close to, like, really overheating it, but it still had a little bit in it. So uh, here's going to be the test. So what we're going to look for here is to make sure the, the belt is not touching on that um, bolt that's holding it in. Yeah, it's looking good to me so far. It's not touching, so we should be pretty good. Ooh, there's something wrong with this belt, though. First, I want to make sure that there's some water coming out of here. Shouldn't have any problem with that. Is that system will touch? Yeah, that system never got touched. It was just the well, fresh water system. Let me trim the fibers off of that belt, and I think we're okay. And then we'll motor a little ways and see uh, if we start overheating. Okay? Close. I went ahead and, and painted that white just to see if it was rubbing. It looks stupid close from here. So, not hitting. I'll keep an eye on it. I'll check it every few hours and make sure it's not um, rubbing on the belt. And I took it up to um, cruising speed, took it to idle, took it in between ran it for a while and it's not it's not hitting the white at all so it should be fine let's go there is a life i lead in this city hurry to cup my tea i can take what i need to get by it doesn't make it easy yeah, the peace of my heart moves slow Somewhere in the great unknown When I return from the afterglow Will you carry me like I am whole again? Wait, hold on Put me together, take me back where I belong I want it all Take me 
back where I belong I want it all I had a feeling but the feeling is all gone Okay, so we just arrived in San Blas and I heard the water pump running. Um, I don't know how long it's been running, but this line exploded. See, right here, it just completely exploded. So it's been draining water into our bilge, which sucks. So I'm gonna get some better line. I've got some better stuff that I can use and then um, we'll make another stop for that because this part is broken. It, it still works. It's got a recirculation system that makes the water hot and uh, I'd like to keep it. And all the plumbing is plumbed in with this special connections so it needs to stay, but the relief valve doesn't work. So I just made that up to um, stop it. But it looks like it didn't work. So I'll make it with some better line this time. I figure we're gonna need enough to clamp on and then clamp here, so probably like that much. Perfect. Okay. That is not the right. This isn't re really even the right way to do this, but I don't know another way right now. It worked for now, it's just this is shitty line. It's so old. This was clear at one point. <laughs> That's how old it is. Take this. Let's do it one more. This fiber reinforced line is so much better than this just polyurethane line because it doesn't it doesn't split like that. I should have known it was gonna happen. And then you forget about it. So if you don't do it right the first time, you're not. And, the, and if you do it wrong, and you know you have to fix it, you gotta write it down on a list. Okay, that should work there. Okay. Now let's see. We have a leak. Nope, don't see it. Don't see it leaking. Good. We're good for now. I need to get that replaced. This is about $700, this thing, to get a new one. So it doesn't have a big priority. because I'm in the tropics. I don't need hot water, really. But um, I should get some kind of plug for the end of that. I'm gonna write that down right now. Okay. Crisis diverted again. Wow, look at that. This is just trash. Okay, that'll go out with the next trash lot. This stuff is like gold. I should have like every single size of this. You know, this is half, get three quarters, get an inch, get a whole bunch of this. It's fairly cheap. It's like a dollar a foot or something. So yeah. Welcome to Sandblast. We finally made it to the stunning Gunayala, most commonly known as San Blas Islands. The archipelago is formed by numerous islands, one for every day of the year, and it's bounded to the northwest of Panama by the Caribbean Sea. They are renowned for their glistening white sandy beaches, waving palm trees, crystal clear waters, and pristine reefs. These islands cheat no one's version of paradise. It's home to 51 communities of indigenous people known as the Gunas, that make their living from hunting, fishing, and the production of molas, colorful tapestry and clothing made by women. They still live as their ancestors did, dwelling in small wooden shacks covered with palm leaves, with logs smoldering in the fireplaces and hammocks as the only furniture. It looks too perfect to be real. So we made it to the San Blas Islands. Hermoso. Que increíble como las personas viven ahí. The crew awakens. Good morning. And what do you think about being in paradise? I love it. <laughs> Just met a guy on a boat. He's gonna bring us some coconuts. Mwah. Yeah, I can't wait for coconuts. The coconuts here are some of the best in the world. Heidi, you feeling better? Yes. 
<laughs> Last night was a, a good night sleep or bad? Good, very good. Thank oh. you for this quiet place here. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Heidi got a little sick last night because we were rolling pretty good. There was no wind. We had the motor here the whole way. But it wasn't too bad. And when we got here, this is all protected by reef. So all of this in here, this is all coral reef in here. It goes out to about that island and then extends just a little farther. So we've got so much reef. Nestor lives over there with his mom and dad and he went to get us some coconuts. What a nice guy. Hello. Hi guys. Are these your children? Yes. Hello. What are your names? Marlenis. Nice to meet you, Marlenis. So your name is Nestor, right? Yeah. I think I met you last time I was here. You 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 talk to all the cruisers, right? That come in here. I bought some water from you last time. Right. Oh, look at those coconuts. They look perfect. Oh my gosh. Hey, you know you don't need the kuna flag. Kuna flag. How much is it? Ten dollars. Oh, I do want a kuna flag. And the coconuts are still two dollars each, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, very cool, man. This is for the fly. Yeah. Did you make it? This is the making of my mother-in-law. Oh, shoot. There's two. Can you hold it open for me? Oh, I love the, it. The fly, the island fly. Yeah, very the cool. Fly. What does it mean? Do you know the meaning of the... I have the, the, the second fly. This is the, the revolution fly. Yeah. But this is only for the island. I love it. It's very pretty. The Guna Revolution was an uprising by the Kuna Indians to declare independence from the Panamanian authorities who were attempting to force them to adopt Hispanic culture by military action. This was in February 1925. Traditionally, before Panama's declaration of independence from Colombia in 1903, the Kuna Indians were able to cooperate with the Colombian government and live peacefully by their own laws and customs. The Kuna felt that the revolution was crucial for their ethnic survival, as the laws implemented by the new Panamanian government directly impacted traditional Kuna education, dress, and customs. Following mediation by the United States, the Kuna reunited with Panama and with the support of the government, created an autonomous territory called the Kuna Yala District for the indigenous inhabitants, which they would rule themselves. The revolution flag uses ancient symbols for the Kuna culture, a swastika. For them, the cross means that there are kunas in the north, south, east, and west, and a kuna is never alone. Thank you. I appreciate that. Where are you from? It's new to me. I'm American. Ah, uh, you're American. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Americano. Good, good guy. This is my machete. It was a gift. And the blade is totally blunt. That's how they sell them. You gotta sharpen it yourself. It doesn't matter that it's rusty, it just matters that. It needs to be sharpened, so. Yeah, that'll cut the coconut. All right, now I need to protect the boat because I'll end up hitting the wood and like messing it up. So I'm gonna get a chopping block and open these coconuts up. It's the top. This is where it grows. These are the eyes. If you, if you peel this part off, it'll have three little eyes. Oopsie. I shouldn't do that on the boat. Anyway, it'll have three little eyes in here. And if you want to drill through a coconut, you go through one of these eyes. Uh, and then it's really easy to get down into the coconut. But if you want to open it up to drink it, and you just kind of go at an angle and peel the top off of it until you get down to the nut. Because the nut's in there. It's about this big. There's the nut. Down to it. Now we got to the meat. Oh. That's one of the best coconuts in the world, I swear. Try it. Wait. Okay. Yeah. So good. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do a better job of opening the rest of these coconuts. We'll see how that works. Um, we're gonna get out of here. It's a little bit dangerous, so I'm gonna 
um, start the engine, motor away, and then we'll put the sails up and go. And I really want to fly the drone, so it's charging right now. So, 10 more minutes. I'll sip some tea. You guys, through the power of video editing, don't have to wait. Well, maybe just one week more. Join us next week as we take you through an adventure all through the beautiful Sun Blast Islands. I need to get in the water. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect.